Elimination, the process of expelling waste materials from our body, either through our bowel or through the bladder. They're not things we think about on an everyday basis until they go wrong, and then they can be very distressing. We're going to be talking about the concept of elimination, which is one nursing concept, but we're gonna break it into two separate lectures, one about urinary elimination and one about bowel elimination. So right now, we're going to be talking about urinary elimination. So for today's lecture, we'll be using Giddens chapter 17 and Davis chapter 28. And we'll be using uh, the concept study guide version B to complete during this lecture. And you'll be a com a, a completing the following objectives. So go ahead, pause here and read through these objectives on your own. So let's go ahead and define and describe the concept of elimination. So elimination is the excretion of waste from the body and urinary elimination, therefore, is the passage of urine out of the urinary tract through the urinary sphincter and the urethra. Now, some key terms that you'll need to know for urinary elimination include micturition or voiding, and those words can be used interchangeably and mean the passage of urine or urination Continence, which is the purposeful control of urine elimination. Incontinence is the loss of the control. And then retention, urinary retention means maintaining urine within the body that would normally be expelled. So we need to recognize when an individual has problems with elimination. Now the scope of the concept includes uh, the normal or expected physiologic process of waste formation and excretion, as well as problems associated with this process. So we would expect normal, efficient waste formation and waste ex excretion and elimination. And there can be impairment with the elimination or efficient, meaning everything's working very well. Now let's talk about the urinary elimination in terms of anatomy and physiology of the urinary tract. Now on the screen are the different organs and components of the urinary tract, the bladder, the urethra, the internal and external sphincters. And I'm gonna link a six minute video down below that really discusses quickly and easily the anatomy and physiology of the urinary tract. So go ahead and pause here and watch that video now. Now, in order to understand what is abnormal, we must first understand what is normal. So for the voiding process, typically the bladder fills with between 200 to 450 mLs of urine. And at the stretch of that activates stretch receptors in the bladder wall that signals the voiding reflex center. When the patient is ready to eliminate, the detrusor muscle is contracted to push urine out through the urethra and the conscious relaxation of the external urethra sphincter allows the urine to freely flow out of the body. Okay, there are variations in context in urinary elimination. Control uh, refers to the ability to hold one's urine. Retention means the inability to release one's urine where it's retained and it can't come out. Um, that's called urinary retention. Discomfort can happen from a very overfilled bladder, like a retention, or from something like an infection that can cause something called dysuria. Dys meaning bad, urea meaning urine. So painful urination is called dysuria. Infections can certainly happen. They're called urinary tract infections. And with infection, we know inflammation goes hand in hand. Neoplasms are things like tumors and cancers. And then certainly organ failure. So you can have a failure of your kidneys, renal failure, um, which is a variation of uh, urinary elimination and can affect elimination. So let's talk briefly about some of these consequences, such as urinary retention. Urinary retention is when the body retains or holds in urine and is unable to excrete it. Um, and this is caused by the external sphincter does not open for the release of urine, or there's some kind of blockage of the urethra that doesn't allow urine to pass. And this can lead to an increased urine volume and bladder distension, which is very uncomfortable for the patient. 
Um, this can cause backflow to the upper urinary tract, like the kidneys. Um, it can cause dilation of the ureters and the re renal pelvis, causing in, in, in enlargement of those um, areas. Um, or pyelonephritis and renal atrophy. Pyelonephritis meaning an infection of the kidney and atrophy meaning a breakdown of the kidney tissue itself. And all of these can um, be caused by urinary retention backflowing into the upper urinary tract. So let's talk about factors that place individuals at risk for elimination problems, specifically with urinary elimination. So really all individuals, regardless of their age, gender, or race, are potentially at risk, but there are populations at greater risk uh, to urinary elimination problems, such as children, pregnant women, and older adults. And your Giddens text on page 157 lists some good explanations on why these populations are at greatest risk. So go ahead and read that for yourself. So your Davis text also talks about factors that affect urinary elimination, pathological effects, uh, conditions like neoplasms, cancers, bladder or kidney infections, kidney stones, which is like a calculi that builds up, um, hypertrophy of the prostate, an enlarged prostate, which can then occlude the urethra. Uh, mobility problems can have it be a difficulty reaching the bathroom in order to void. Decreased blood flow. If you don't have good blood through for your kidneys, your kidneys make urine by blood, blood going in and out of the, of the kidneys and it's filtered and made, make urine. So if you don't have a lot of blood flow to your kidneys, you're not gonna have a lot of urine created by the kidney. Neurologic conditions can affect uh, urinary elimination and the ability for you to uh, void on your own and intentionally. Uh, communication problems can cause challenges with urinary elimination and alterations in cognition. Uh, someone who is not mentally with it may have a hard time controlling their urine. Now with the older population, we're going to see changes, physiologic changes um, related to urination. Um, so the kidney function decreases over time. Urgency, meaning a, a sense that you need to go, and frequency, you need to go a lot, are very common. And this has to do with the last loss of bladder elasticity and muscle tone. And it can lead to nocturia, which means getting up to void a lot at night, or incomplete emptying, where the bladder is not completely emptied when the patient does void. <laughs> 